In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Hello out there, thank you for saying, I'm going to keep Sunday holy. And hello all the way again from Skagway, Alaska. Now, is today a good day to make assumptions? You bet it is, right on the feast day, the solemnity. This is a huge feast day, so you got to eat two danishes today, two desserts. Right, the Feast of the Blessed Mother, we'll hear uh, in the scriptures, the woman crowned with 12 stars. Right? And she prays for all the tribes of Israel, and she prays for you, and she prays for me. And she prays that we come to her son as fast as we can, and that's one of the best things about a mom. If a mom sees her kid walking the wrong direction, she can swoop down if her kid is willing, pick the kid up, and rapidly get to the car, or the soccer practice, or come to church. So let's ask our Blessed Mother to pray for us as we come back to her son all the more on this Sunday, our Lord's Day. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the Ark of His Covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its head were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen takes her place at your right hand in gold of Ophir. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. Hear, O daughter, and see. Turn your ear, forget your people and your father's house. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your lord. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. They are born in the gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, 
so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Mary is taken up to heaven, a chorus of angels exalts. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary, Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Let's do a reading here on the Assumption from the poet Van Halen. Don't want to wait till tomorrow. Why put it off another day? One more walk through a problem, build up and stands in our way. Ah, one step ahead, one step behind. Now you gotta run to get even. Make future plans or dream about yesterday. Hey, come on now, turn this thing around. Right now. It's your tomorrow. Right now, it's everything. Right now. Catch that magic moment. Do it right here and now. It means everything. Right now, it's your tomorrow. Are you a fan of Van Halen? Yes or no? My father loves Van Halen. The only person who loves Van Halen more than my father is my mom. No, my mom, my mom can't stand Van Halen. But you know who loves Van Halen? The Blessed Mother. What, Father Dave, does Mary? Yes, Mary loves all her children. Even the one who plays an awesome rock guitar. But why Van Halen and why that song right now? Maybe you heard it, maybe you didn't hear it. Have heard it before. Because right now, right, there's a song in that, that phrase, right now is your tomorrow. That captures a little bit of what we're remembering today in the Feast of the Assumption. Because this is who Mary is. If Mary sees someone in need, is she going to like wait and put off helping them? When does she act? Right now. Right? So she, so Jesus, right, right. the angel Gabriel appears to her and God asks her that incredible question. Would you say yes to this amazing thing of the incarnation that God is actually going to step into humanity and come into the world? Would you say yes to that? What does Mary do? Does Mary say, well, you know, I'm going to think about it for a while. Right? I don't know if that's an English or Australian accent. Right? She had neither. 
No, Mary says, my soul claims the greatness of the Lord, right? Let it be done to me according to your will, right? She says, yes, right then, fiat, yes. Let it be done to me according to your will. She doesn't hesitate. When she hears that her cousin, Elizabeth, right, is pregnant in her old age, what does she do? She goes immediately, that's the word right here, she traveled to the hill country in haste. Immediately she goes to help Elizabeth. Right? When she sees the couple at the wedding in Cana, and the open bar is going to close, they're running out of wine. What does Mary say? Like, oh, you know, somebody should take care of that. What does she do? Boom! She immediately goes to her son. Right? She acts right now for the good that she can see that someone needs. She never waits. And so this is why when we pray as Catholics, many people think we pray to saints. Do we pray to saints? Yes or no? Say no. We never pray to saints. We only pray to Almighty God. And sometimes people get it wrong. They think we pray to saints because we talk like that. Right? So like, you know, if you're in the military, you have all these acronyms. In school, you have the PTA, right? You have all this, what you have ways of talking when you're like in a club or a group or an organization. And we as Catholics have ways of talking. And we'll say, oh, if you lose something, say a prayer to St. Anthony, right? You know, uh, you want help with your family gathering at Christmas, say a prayer to St. Nicholas, right? You know, you're trying to win the lottery, say a prayer to St. Jude, right? The hopeless cases, right? We don't actually mean that you fall down on your knees and worship them with the worship due God. Because saints can't hear prayers. Only God can hear a prayer. Now what God can do, what the Bible tells us is what he does, is he'll link your prayer to a person to give an answer. He'll send an angel in response to your prayer. And so he could decide to share the content of your prayer with one of the saints and ask St. Joseph to help you find a house. But St. Joseph can't hear your prayer. Only God can. I mean, if your neighbor's listening in, they can hear the word you speak. This is why Jesus says, go to your room and close your door and pray to the Father in secret. So it may feel inside of your heart that when you're saying a prayer to God, that may feel the same as when you're asking a saint to pray for you, but they're really different. Right? How are they different? It's a different thing to ask a friend to pray for you than it would be for you to pray to your friend. Okay. One is in line with Christianity. One would be idolatry, worshiping a friend. And so you heard in the gospel today, right, we hear this line that we quote when we ask Mary to pray for us, right? Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Which is what Elizabeth says to her. We're quoting the scriptures. We're quoting first the archangel Gabriel, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And then we quote Elizabeth, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And then what do we do? We're not praying to her. It may feel like that because you're doing something spiritual on the inside, but it's different. They're worshiping God and falling on your knees before the Almighty. We're saying, Mary, right? Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And what will she do? <laughs> Boom! She's going to act when? Right now. That's why it's in there. Right? Mary acts immediately when she sees someone in need. And that, line, that song has this great line that's pretty cool because it says, right now is your tomorrow. So what does Jesus teach us? He says, the measure with which you measure will be measured back to you. What you do to others will be done for you. If you forgive, you're going to be forgiven. If you feed, you will be fed. If you welcome, you will be made welcome. Right? If you build someone up, you will be built up. If you give to the poor, you will be given to. Right? If you raise someone's dignity, then you will be raised. If you serve others, God will serve you. Like, it's all throughout the scriptures. Jesus is like, man, like, be generous, as your heavenly Father is generous. Right? So Mary gives her all to God, and she acts immediately. And so now we come to the assumption, at the end of her life, now, does God want to bring us to heaven, yes or no? Yes. Does he want to bring his mother to heaven, yes or no? Yes. And at the end of time, you'll get your body back. Like, that's there's teaching for that for another time. But you will have a glorified body, and it won't have gray hair and, you know, a, a belly infused by Doritos and achy knees and you know, hopefully you'll have your hair in heaven, right? That's why I'm growing it now, right? But most of us are going to have to wait until the very end of time to get our body back. Our soul will be with God, but you won't get your body until the resurrection and the dead at the end of time. 
But does it make sense if God is like, do this and it will be done for you, what you do to others will be done to you, that God would make Mary wait for that if Mary immediately acted upon the good that she saw, if she immediately acted upon God's word? Would it make sense to make her wait? No. She who acted immediately will be acted immediately towards. And so at the end of her life, and we don't know if she died, we kind of talk about it because it's a mystery, we don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. But at the end of her life, whether that means she died, or she kind of like went to sleep, or just, boom, went to heaven, assumed into heaven, and we would say like, floated up, but she doesn't really float up. Heaven's not literally an altitude above you. That's a symbolic, the scriptures are full of symbols, right? Because we speak in the language of symbols. Language itself is a symbolic meaning train, right? I was going to say that for now, right? But at the end of her life, she immediately went to heaven, body and soul. Well, where is that in the Bible, Father Dave? All right, so hold on. First, a couple things. It is in the Bible, and it was shown to us today. So we're getting a little off, a little aside, but it is here. I'll show it to you. Second, be very careful when you're trading Bible passages because who does that, right? Jesus does that. Well, the devil does that in arguing with Christ. So the Bible itself will say that not everything that God did or shared or revealed is contained in the Bible. St. John tells us that at the very end of the Bible, right? That not all the books of the world can contain everything that Jesus did or said or taught. All right, so there's that. But the book of Revelation, we had the first reading. What does it, what does it say? God's temple in heaven was open. So this is St. John. He's writing this. And what does he say? The Ark of the Covenant could be seen in the temple. The Ark. Dun, 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 dun. Indiana Jones. Where is the Ark of the Covenant? Is it an American warehouse? Hmm. The prophet Jeremiah tells us where the Ark of the Covenant is. Right? He says, the Jeremiah took the Ark of the Covenant and he put it in a cave on Mount Nebo. Not Mount Sinai, Mount Nebo. And he hid it there. And what the Bible says is the Ark of the Covenant will not return until the glory of the Lord and the mercy of the Lord appears. It's interesting. What did the Ark hold in it? Stone tablets that God wrote on. Right? The commandments. The words of God. It's interesting. Because what the book of Revelation says is that the ark could be seen in the heaven. And then St. John says, A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon beneath her feet, and her head a, twel a crown of twelve stars, and she was with child. The, how the book of Revelation talks is it uses different symbols, and it mixes those symbols, almost like a tie-dye t-shirt. It mixes those symbols together, and the meaning is found between the colors, between the different symbols. Right, so... What the book of Revelation is saying is that the Blessed Mother is the Ark. That she is the Ark of the Covenant. That her, herself, her body is the Ark. Well, what did her body contain? Even more powerful than the stone tablets that Moses carried down the mountain. The 15, the 10 commandments, for those of you who remember that, that comedy. Better than those stone tablets is Almighty God himself that Mary conceived and carried in her womb and brought into the world. And then she immediately acted on anything he ever asked her at, at that moment. Well, Father Dave, that makes some sense, right? The ark carried the tablets, Mary carried her Lord. But isn't that a stretch to say that she's the ark and she's in it? Well, no, because in the reading that we have today from Luke's gospel, what's, what Luke is writing is is an account in the gospel of what happened when the Ark of the Covenant came into the city of David in Jerusalem. So those of you who remember what happened, right? King David says, how should this happen to me that the Ark should come into my house? Interesting. And what does King David do? He shouts for joy. He leaps and dances before the Lord. And the Ark comes in. He has it stay at someone's house temporarily until he can set up a proper fitting dwelling place. And how long was that temporarily? Oh yeah, three months. And so now you look at the reading and what happens. Mary arrives and when Elizabeth hears whose greeting? Mary's greeting. The infant leaps for joy, leaps in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice. She shouts, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. 
For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that was spoken to you by the Lord will be fulfilled. Right, Mary's going to talk about how God has done this incredible thing. He's lifted up the lowly, lifted her up, and all of us up with her. Right? And then how long does Mary stay? Right, well, so we know that Elizabeth is six months pregnant when Gabriel appears to Mary, so Mary's going to stay to help her cousin, and she's going to stay for three months. But it could have said in the Bible that Mary remained with her until John was born, or the pregnancy had completed. But it actually says, remain with her three months. Again, it's a reference back to the Old Testament when the Ark of the Covenant has arrived. Mary is the new Ark. And St. John tells us in the book of Revelation that she is in heaven, body, and soul. That she who acted immediately, that God would do the same for her. And so, that comes to you and to me now. Right? When you see someone in need, what do you do? Hopefully you go to help them, but when should you help them? Right then, right now. Right? Don't put it off until tomorrow. Because you might not see that person, and you may pass away, and there's a good you could have done that you wouldn't have done, or that you didn't do if you didn't do it. So if you can give someone a word of encouragement, give it right now. Right? When people don't go to confession for a long time, and they come back, and I'm hearing their confession, what do I do? I say, oh, Father Dave, it's been a long time since my last confession. I say, okay. And in the head as a priest, I'm going, man, I got a long line of people wanting to come to confession, so I got to make this quick, because I don't have time to go through 30 years of, of, like, one by one, right? So what do I do? I go through the commandments. I tell the people, say yes or no. Right? Did you do this? You do that. Do this, do that. Then um, we go through the deadly sins. And then I say, is there any good that you failed to do? Did you ever see somebody begging, and you have 20 bucks in your wallet, you don't give it to them, and you, you walk on, and then your conscience is like, man, you should have given them that money. Right? We say at the Mass, we ask God to forgive us for what we've done and what we failed to do. Mary never failed to do any good. And God rewarded her. And there's the other good news of today's, today's Gospel, right? That God is just. And so any good thing that you do, whether you're praying for someone right now, you're praying for me in this town, you're praying for your family, you're watching this Mass, right? Any good that you do, God sees it all. And he will reward you. So give him a whole lot to reward you for. And do it right now. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's raise our prayers to Almighty God. Uh, we pray that every generation of the church, uh, we pray that every generation in the church call Mary blessed and look to her as a model for humble faith, feel obedience, and response. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The nations unite to combat pornography and all forms of violence against women and families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those awaiting the birth of a child have loved ones like Elizabeth to support them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The missing children be reunited with their families and loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the model of friendship we all seek be found in the love shared by Mary and Elizabeth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Christians in the Holy Land, especially those uh, who still live uh, where, where Elizabeth and Mary live. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for an end to the coronavirus uh, and help to all the different towns around the world uh, that are struggling because of it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our people back home at the parish of St. Martha's in Point Pleasant. Wherever you're watching this, pray for my people back home. Pray for the people here of St. Teresa's in Skagway. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we may not be lazy in saying our prayers and giving someone a word of encouragement and forgiving or reaching out. May we do it right now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. It's at our own intentions now in silence. We pray to the Lord. We pray for Diane and Jess back home. May God bless them for all their help on this online mass throughout the year and a half. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy, mighty God, you fill our every need. Hear our prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus, born of Mary, and show us the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this offering of our tribute of homage rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of your love, constantly long for you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as in joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as, therefore O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son's wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Therese, Saint Martha, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Andrew, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. You have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Okay, right here before the Lamb of God, I want to teach you a little bit about this part of the Mass. So you'll see often that a priest will break the host and he puts a little piece of the host in the chalice. Why do we do that? So imagine that you went not on a trip, let's say, to Alaska. Imagine that you're a town. Right? Imagine you're a town, and I talk with my hands, and you go to Italy, right? And you see your people, your ancestors. I'm probably doing a terrible Italian accent, right? And you find that when they're making the sauce or the gravy, one of the two, whatever they're making. Um, that they put a bay leaf in it. Let's just say, I don't know why. You know why. They know why. And you're like, wow, they've always put a bay leaf in when they're making the spaghetti sauce or the spaghetti gravy, whichever one it is. So when you come home from Italy, and what do you start doing in your own kitchen? You start putting bay leaf in your ragu, right? Because why do you do that there at home? Because you saw them do it over there when you were in Italy. Okay, so for the first couple centuries of Christianity, there was just the Catholic faith, and we were getting hunted down by the Romans, right? We were getting killed. And so we were meeting in the, in the catacombs. And so the deacons, what would they do? They would take a piece of the host from the bishop's mass, and they would fold it in a special cloth, and they would go and they would carry that to other Christian communities. And so they would have a piece of the same bread that was now the body of Christ. It was consecrated by the bishop. It was like, if, imagine I had some sourdough bread from up here in Alaska, and I came to your house with some of the bread from up here. So if someone came here on a cruise, and they took the bread that I had up here and they brought it to you, we would be connected, right? And so they did that with the Eucharist. Well, after Christianity came out of um, hiding, and we were no longer being hunted or persecuted, all the priests started coming to Rome, and pilgrimages started going to Rome. And what would they see? They would see at Mass, that they would still take a piece of the host. Oh, and let me tell you this, because the deacon would take the host from the bishop's mass, and he would bring it to another church, like a secret gathering in the catacombs, and they would place that piece in the chalice of that local mass to show a connection between their mass and the bishop's mass. It looked a lot different than it does right now, and none of it was on the internet, right? And so what's, what happened is after Christianity came out from the underground, and we could worship freely in the fourth century under Constantine, 
people started to go to Rome and they saw that what they would do in Rome is they would take a little piece of the host and put it in a chalice. And so they went home to their own places around the world and started to do what they saw them do in Rome. Why Rome? Because Rome was the symbolic capital and center of the world. It wasn't the center of the world, but it had the symbolism of being the center of the world. Right? So that's why Peter and Paul uh, go to Rome. It's necessary for the Pope to be in Rome. Right? So what you're going to hear then is the church started to, to do this practice, and there's a prayer that the priests say privately at this part of the Mass. You probably never hear it, but I'm going to say it today out loud. So uh, the priest is going to say, May this, may, may this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. That was never part of the Mass in the beginning. That's what the church decided to pray as the whole church picked up this custom of putting a little piece of the host in a chalice that dates back to when we came out of the underground and were not being hunted. Let's get to that part of the Mass right now. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. So there's a special blessing today, uh, 682. And I want to tell you about um, Tom and Michelle. Very good. So Tom and Michelle did the readings. Uh, there are two great Catholics. Uh, they live half of the year down there in uh, Wisconsin, and then they come up here. They mow the lawn in the church. That's pretty cool. Except Tom and Michelle are Packer fans. And Tom and Michelle, one, one year when they were mowing the lawn, Tom thought it would be really funny to make a big G for the Packers with the clippings of the lawn because Father Dave was coming to town. But they run a little tour company. Uh, called Trail of 98 Tours. I'll put the link down below. And so if you come uh, to town and you want to see the dog sled teams and all the puppies and, and like for like adopt, you don't really get to take it home, but like you can sponsor a sled dog and a sled puppy and have all these puppies around you. Uh, you want to go and see the beautiful route up into uh, Emerald Lake and the Yukon and Car Cross, Caribou Crossing. You want to see some great sights. And you have like a family group, let's say it's like your anniversary and everybody's coming as your family you want to have like something that's cheaper for your family than maybe something you would find from the cruise ship tom michelle's tours uh trail of 98 tours uh tnt tn tours 98.com i should have it down below check them out um you'll be helping two good catholics that help care for the church here they're part of our community up here um and it's frankly it's going to be cheaper than trying to do something through one of the cruise ship stuff so I think it's really cool uh, if for folks who are coming to Alaska to try to help some of the locals up here. Next week, we have to tell you about, sadly, another group that are not Minnesota fans. They're Eagle fans. Dun, dun, dun. Not as bad as Packer fans. Uh, but they have a local restaurant here in town, so hopefully I can get that, that maps to you as well. We have to stay tuned for that next week. But uh, if you have the ability to come here on a cruise with a group and you want a small tour, some of the beauty around you, maybe think about by helping out Tom and Michelle and help them out right now by praying for them. Oh, and uh, I got to tell you some jokes. These jokes are from a friend of mine back home uh, who sent a card. So some of you have found me up here. God bless you guys. And let me just say briefly, thanks. Um, thanks to um, Claire and Bill in um, 
Michigan, he had Claire and Bill uh, Ropery in Michigan. They made a nice donation to the church up here. Thank you very much, you guys. Really, really cool. Um, thank you to Holly in South Korea. I did get your cards. I like Jordan Peterson. I think some of his, his stuff is pretty great. Uh, some of his stuff I'm like, ah, I'm not so sure about, but most of his stuff I think is pretty cool. Uh, and I do love Nacho Libre. It's a great movie. If you've never seen Nacho Libre, watch Nacho Libre. Really, really good Jack Black movie. Um, so thank you guys for uh, sending some support up here to me in the local church. That's pretty cool and it lights my heart. Uh, and our friend down in Jersey says, uh, my friend Nancy down in Jersey says, did you hear about the Alaskan native that didn't like to fish? He was an Inuit. <laughs> but a bump. I saw a t-shirt here in town that's pretty cool. It has a picture of a bear on it. And the bear has in front of him what Craggy would love, a whole pizza. And the bear says, am I into fitness? You bet I am. Fitness whole pizza in my mouth. <laughs> Craggy would like that. I would like it too. Thanks everybody for keeping Sunday holy. God bless you. Hopefully we'll see you next week. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who through the child bearing with the Blessed Virgin Mary, will in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with this blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Oh, that was great! That was actually really good! <laughs> that was so good. For just as Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Hold on.